Hi guys, today we're going to talk about lines and circles. So we're going to find measures of angles formed by intersecting lines, so secants and tangents. And we're going to prove relationships or talk about the relationships of those lines. Secants that intersect on the outside, the exterior of the circle, is half the difference of the measures of the intersected arcs. lines and they're intersecting here at point A on the outside of the circle and this angle right here this angle is going to be one half one half of the difference of these two arcs the intercepted arcs okay so the measure of BAE is going to be one half of 100 minus 30. So 100 minus 30 is 70, and then half of 70 would be 35. Of an angle formed by two secants that intersect inside the circle and the interior is going to be half the sum of the measure of the intercepted arc. So here we're going to add the arcs together and then take half of that. Okay, well that's going to be equal to the sum of the arcs divided by two. And since we know that arc AB is 40 and arc DC is 30, we add those together, we get 70, and then take half of that and we get 35. we see that we have a secant and a tangent, and they are intersecting at the point of tangency I. And we know that the measure of HI, so this intercepted arc, the intercepted arc is 120, which means that the measure of HIJ, the measure of angle one right here, is going to be half that, so it'd be 60. We want to look, find the measure of ABC. Okay, um, we have a tangent and secant right there, and we know that the measure of AB is 170. So, in order to find the measure of ABC, measure of angle one, we have to take half of 170, which gives us 85. that intersect in the exterior of the circle is half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. X, the measure of angle X. We have two secants in the interior, which means that X should be half of their sum the sum of this one and the sum of that one. But we don't know the sum of this arc and this arc. We do know that that sum has to be 360 minus 65 minus 111. So again, these other arcs are going to add up to whatever 360 minus 111 minus 65 is. And then so x would be half of that. So x is half of the sum of the other arcs, which was 360 minus 111 minus 65, giving us the answer of 92. Remember, this angle here is half of the difference of these two arcs. But we don't know this angle. We do know that it's a vertical angle to this angle 29. And vertical angles are congruent, which means that this is 29. So, therefore, 29 is equal to half of x minus 64. So we use an algebra, multiply both sides by 2, so we get 58 is equal to x minus 64. Add 64 to both sides, and we end up with 122. So here we want to find x, okay? We know that this angle here 
is going to be equal to x because they're vertical angles. And we can figure out this angle by taking the difference of 41 and 23 and taking half of it. So 41 minus 23 and half of 41 minus 23 gives us 9. This arc is twice what this angle here is. And this angle will be 58 since this is vertical angles. And x is going to be 360 minus this arc. Okay, so first we figure out 2 times 58 to get this arc, and we end up with 116. And then x would be 360 minus 116, giving us 244. And then we're going to go ahead and do 360 minus x minus x, which gives us 2x minus 2x. So now we have 156 equals 360 minus 2x. We're going to solve for x, so we're going to subtract 360 from both sides, okay, giving us negative 204 equals 2x. We're going to divide both sides by negative 2, which gives us x equals 102. Is congruent to this angle, okay? And this angle is going to be equal to this arc minus 67. So here's the work to figure out what x is. We know that this missing arc is going to be 360 minus 128 minus 67, and that gives us 165. So now we know that this arc is 165. And so now we can go ahead and use our theorem, which says that this angle will be half of 165 minus 67, or half of 98, which means that our, this angle will be 49, and since this 49 is vertical to x, x will also be 49.